Hello, this is Chaplain Stevens, and this is the Christology 101 broadcast on YouTube. And today we're going to be talking about a topic that uh, all believers really need to pay close attention to, and that is the topic of resisting temptation. Uh, we want to talk a little bit about how to resist temptation and some of the things that the enemy does to cause us to fall. Uh, if you look at Ephesians chapter 4, verse 27, it says, Neither give place to the devil. And one of the things that the enemy does is he causes um, footholds and, and, and strongholds in our character and our thinking. And that's the, that's the way, the primary way the enemy attacks us. Uh, the Bible talks about strongholds. You know, we've been falsely taught in a lot of our churches that strongholds are some demonic entities in the atmosphere that can be pulled down. But a stronghold is not in the atmosphere. A stronghold is in your mind. A stronghold is a thought that's contrary to the ways of Christ and the mind of Christ. And so when the Bible talks about pulling down strongholds and wicked imaginations, it's talking about dealing with our thought life. The Bible says, as a man thinks in his heart, so is he. So if your thinking is wrong, chances are you're, you're, you're going to suffer severe attacks from the enemy. You know, one of the reasons why the enemy is able to attack us is because he has areas in our, in our lives uh, that are footholds. And a lot of times, the biggest foothold that the enemy has in most of our lives is fear. And I, and I, and I say that because so many Christians walk around in fear. They're afraid they're going to lose their salvation. They're afraid of displeasing God. They're afraid of demons. They're afraid of the powers of darkness. But the Bible clearly tells us that God hasn't given us the spirit of fear, but of love, uh, uh, of love and uh, po a power and a sound mind. Uh, <coughs> a sound mind is a key to resisting the enemy. Uh, you know, a lot of times we have uh, the baptism of the Holy Spirit, we have Bibles, we have training, we have classes, but if you don't apply it, and if you don't renew your mind in the Word of God, then the enemy will continue to torment you, and continue to torment us, and continue to uh, cause problems for us. Uh, in Job 3 and 25, uh, Job made a statement that was very uh, telling about how the enemy attacks us. Job said, for the thing that I fear, uh, has come upon me. And a lot of times, the areas of our life where there's the stronghold of fear is the area where the enemy will attack us. You know, if you're afraid you're going to fall all the time, then chances are you will fall. And uh, whatever area of weakness you have in your life, you have to turn that thing over to God. You know, uh, Jesus said, take my yoke is easy and my burden is light. You know, whatever area of your life that you're weak in, give it over to God. You know, confess that thing to God. You know, confess your faults one to another. You know, sometimes that's difficult because sometimes the person you're confessing to may have a, a weak, be weaker than you are. So be very careful who you confess to. But if you do, confess to somebody that's spiritual and is spiritually mature. The Bible clearly lets us know that ye which are spiritual restore such a one in the spirit of meekness. It takes a spiritually mature person to help a person come to restoration. Because when a, when a person is spiritually mature, when somebody that's take, take, taking a fall comes to you, you're, a spiritually mature person won't judge them. A spiritually mature person won't gossip. A spiritually mature person won't uh, take your business to the street. They'll pray for you. They'll intercede for you. And they'll, uh, they'll, they'll help you uh, uh, come to a place of recovery and restoration. So we have to be careful who we confess our faults to. Even though it's important that we find somebody that we do uh, confess our faults so we can be transparent with. Transparency is one of the things that causes uh, the enemy not to have power over us. You know, when you confess a sin, it's like, it's like taking a yoke off of you. It's like taking chains off of you because as long as you don't confess that sin, it's just like the enemy has uh, power over you in escrow. And when the enemy needs to use that power over you, he will. So it's very important that we as believers uh, have a transparent lifestyle. You know, don't be afraid to confess your faults. Don't be afraid to admit when you're wrong. You know, uh, fear is like one of the devil's calling cards. If he can keep you in fear, then he can keep you from being effective for God. 
You know, refuse to be afraid. You know, God told Joshua to fear not. You know, to be of good courage. Uh, he also told Joshua to meditate on the Word of God day and night. He have good success. And the reason why, when you meditate on the Word of God, it casts out fear. The Bible says perfect love casts out fear. And as you apply the Word of God to your everyday life, and as you apply the Word of God to your uh, situations, God will continue to advance you in the kingdom of God and use you mightily. But as long as you allow fear to have a foothold in your life, God can't use you. So we want to be uh, you know, very careful to be uh, open to the power of the Holy Spirit as He leads and guides us. And, uh, you know, whenever you start feeling fear overtaking you, rebuke it in the name of Jesus. Because fear didn't come from God. Fear is not of God. That's one of the biggest tricks of the enemy. And you may, you may have a weakness. You may be addicted to drugs. You may be addicted to alcohol, pornography, whatever it is. Whatever your area of weakness is, give that thing over to God. Confess it. Repent of it. Give it to God. And let me just say this about repentance. Repentance means to change your mind. So many times we get messed up and we think repent means get right with God. If you had the power to get right with God, you wouldn't need him. None of us have the power to get right with God. What it takes is a relationship with Jesus Christ. It takes us confessing our faults. It takes us asking for the power of the Holy Spirit to lead and guide us. It takes studying the Word of God so we can renew our minds in the Word so those strongholds can be pulled down. Remember, a stronghold is a wrong thought. A lot of us have wrong thoughts before we become Christian. And as we read the Word of God and apply it to our lives, those wrong thoughts come down. Those are strongholds. Any thought that's contrary to the Word of God is a stronghold. The Bible says in 1 John 4 and 4, Greater is he that's in you than he that's in the world. And who's in the world? The enemy. Who's in you? Jesus. So if Jesus is in you, you have no right or reason to be afraid of he that's in the world. Alright? The Bible says in John 8, 32, that you shall know the truth and the truth shall make you free. The more you study the word of truth, the freer you'll become. You know, that's why the enemy tries to keep you away from your Bible. You know, a Christian that doesn't study and read his Bible is a weak Christian. So continue to study your Bible. If you're just getting the Word on Sunday morning, you're starving. Uh, you're malnutrition. You need to get into that book every day. You know, study the Bible when you wake up in the morning. Read a little bit. Read it at lunchtime. Read it before you go to bed. That's the, that's the way to keep the enemy off your back. If you remember when Jesus was being tempted in the wilderness, the way he resisted the devil by, by, was by, by reminding the devil that it is written. Every time the devil came at Jesus, with some contrary temptation, Jesus reminded the devil, it is written. The word of God is your best and only weapon against the devil. Don't forget that. God bless you guys. We'll be back again with another uh, broadcast dealing with the same topic, resisting the devil and resisting temptation. God bless you.